say in this press conference at noon that the strength of the negotiation I told him. I also told him that as I saw this, uh, this was turning into a partisan fight where it didn't belong. And he insisted he was not a party to it. when he comes in. <laughs> <laughs> We've made real progress in bringing down unemployment and creating over 7 million new jobs in the last three years, and over 300,000 of those in the last month alone. But we can't rest until everyone who wants a job can find one. And today I'm resubmitting legislation to establish a summer youth employment opportunity wage. The, and I want to thank Orrin Hatch, Trent Locke, Jerry Denton, Charlie Stenholm, who couldn't be here today, uh, in advance for their work, leadership on this. The minimum wage differential would allow American, American, allow a business to create an additional 400,000 jobs, we believe, for our young people, and would have plenty of protection in there that it wouldn't, no one could substitute really a uh, youth at the lower wage for legitimate uh, wage earners. Under the current federal minimum wage, many inexperienced and disadvantaged young people are priced out of the labor market. There are jobs that if you make them too expensive, uh, there will be people that just figure they don't, they don't need to do those particular jobs. This legislation will help provide the first job with real work experience for many of these young people. And it's experience that might never occur. I remember my first job. You yeah. remember yours? Yeah. And you know, with all the best of intentions today, I look back and realize that we have passed various social reforms that would make it impossible for anyone to do this. I was 14 years old found myself on a job where I would lay in hardwood floor before the summer was over. I shingled roof. I even painted. And so many of these things that just wouldn't be allowed today. And uh, of course, I've often said that one of my better jobs when I then got back to school and was continuing to work my way through school is one of the better jobs I've ever had. I was washing dishes in the girls' dormitory. <laughs> <laughs> Summer is quickly approaching, and we can't afford to waste another opportunity to provide work and that first work experience for so many of America's young people. So I think we all work together. We can get this past Congress, and uh, we know where the greatest numbers contributing to the unemployment figures are today. And they're among our young people, and particularly those who uh, we want to help the most those in our minority communities, and uh, it's been too long coming, them shut out in effect of the summer uh, job market. So let's all go after it. Lights, please. Thank Mr. You. President, the Soviets say that the soldier that they killed was um, was a spy, was taking pictures. Can you comment on that? This is a tragedy that never should have happened, and uh, we challenge that, but. Uh, we have already registered our protest for the, for the tragic death of this, of this man. Have you protested personally, or has it been done at the State Department? No. What's done there is done in my name. Was he a spy, Mr. President? No. Uh, I know that we can't go on with this other subject, and I don't want to take it up here. We've got another subject in our minds, but 
uh, I think if you check, you will find that each country, the Soviets and the United States, are permitted under the terms of the Fort Power Agreement. We each have 14 military personnel. We have them in East Germany, they have them in West Germany, and uh, what they can do in the areas that they can go into are all delineated, and he was doing nothing except what we're entitled to do under the agreements. Was he taking pictures? Hmm? Was he taking pictures of military installations? Uh, I'm still waiting for a lot of details on this, but that is permitted uh, in both areas. There seems to be a lack of outrage on your part, sir. <laughs> a lack of outrage? No, you can't print what I'm thinking. Would something like that prevent a summit meeting? Thank you. Thank you. It would make me more anxious to go to one. Let's go. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Mayor. Richard Borden, Fairwater Place. Nice to see you, Mayor. Very well. There's our, our other well, guests. Uh, <laughs> 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 you just said you'd have an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't get it. always have prices in them all the time. Couldn't get through the traffic. Yes, with the traffic. Can you tell us what we can do? I've been for this for a number of years. City of Baltimore has 40% minority unemployment. Yes. I know you're absolutely right. Now, is there any Anything else that we can do, like the senators and the congressmen tell us, what should we do now? I want to strongly support it. I want to do it right away. Well, and I'd like it done this year, sir. I think it's a case of, of trying to, uh, to carry our desires to the legislature, to Congress, because they're getting, obviously, from some sources, lobbied the other way on this. But uh, there isn't a legitimate argument against this. Good Lord, I remember back to when I was governor of California and a group of young people from Oakland, California, who were the victims. Even then the figures were just this high. And they came to me and I told them what I've said to you about thinking that some of the so-called social reforms had actually militated against. And they said, can we count on you to work to get this changed? And <laughs> I've been working at it ever since. But yes, if we, uh, if we make Congress know that this, this whole figure of unemployment is, uh, is distorted by reason of that 40% you're talking about, and uh, an exceedingly high, but not that high, among uh, uh, the majority of young people, the white, young white teenagers now. Come on in, sit down. I can see you right now. Right. 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 Why don't you go up there and take Looks like I'm getting a full card down on a press here. Yep. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I thought you'd be able to guess what the subject would be. Right. Uh, oh, yeah. I've never worked so hard in trying to untangle a complex issue in my life. My one concern was to share with you uh, something that I did not want to be uh, judged on this vote. Should I not support the MX? is not supporting the modernization program. I think I just made that point you know, a little while ago. Yeah. You know, I think I am terribly afraid of that. Uh, I strongly support the overall modernization. I support the Beam One Bomber. I support the Trident. It seems to me that in the land-based aspect of the system, we still have unresolved questions in terms of which way to go. Um, I guess that's really where I leave with you. I realize the tremendous symbolic importance domestically, the Soviet Union, Europe, uh, you know, the NATO, all these symbols weighing very heavily, and yet the substantive merits of the land-based missile system uh, seems to me a, as a yet unresolved, and that is really what I'm missing. Well, let, all right, let me, let me take off and have a President? Yes. How are you, Dan Glick? Nice yeah. to see you, sir. Fine. Good to see you. Glad to be here. Appreciate your asking yeah. down. Uh, you know, Bud. How are you? Yes, yeah. Bud. Nice to see you. Well, take the chair over there. Where do you want me to sit? Right over there. there. Okay. And we'll do that at a later time. <laughs> All right. I appreciate your um, asking me down. And I, when they call, I said, well, you know, I voted once for it, three or four times against it. I don't want to mislead anybody. I, if, if you were to mark me down, I would be inclined to vote against it. But 
since it's a national security issue, I don't want, ever want to be locked in concrete. And so I felt that um, it would be appropriate to talk to you and maybe figure, I'm, I'm more concerned about the Geneva issue and how that relates to this, uh, rather than talking about the merits of the specific system. Well, as you know, Max Campbell came back, and Campbell came back, and that's, and he's, then he's turning around tonight and going back over there, and I guess without any sleep, he'll be at work in the morning and maybe meeting with them. And uh, I always worry about having somebody meeting with them when they're sleeping. <laughs> but I think he'll stay awake. But he feels that strongly about it. I have to believe that the only reason they're back at the table is because of what Margaret Thatcher told all of you in that meeting up there, because of our strength. There have been 19 efforts by this country since World War II before this one to try and involve the Soviets in some kinds of various kinds of arms limitations and reductions and so forth. Always brought up by us and we never gotten off the ground with them. Then, more than a year ago, they walked away from the tables. Good morning. President Reagan. Thanks. Mr. Hi. President, good seeing you. Good to see you. Yeah. Mr. Vice President. See you again. Good seeing you. Good to see you. Hi. Well, you didn't take the chair. Okay. These are friendly. These are, I was just going to say, <laughs> what network is yeah, this? Uh, uh, <laughs> these are arms. They just start up a record. Okay. You <laughs> can always tell ours they got shirts and ties. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. Well, how do you do? Mr. President, Hi. how are you? How are you? Oh, good. Well, it's good to see Thanks you. Thanks so much for Who's the girl? Oh, she's How are you? <laughs> This is my son. Hi, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Yeah. I'm Mary Ellen. Yes. 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 See you. Ken Donovan, Mr. President. Yes. Hi, and this is my fiance, Mr. Chris King. Hello there. Hi, how are you? Well, welcome in. Everything's all set. Uh, I'm here and.
undecideds. And if the leaners all go the way they're presently leaning, we'll win by an error margin. If they get converted in the meantime by someone leaning the other way, why? It's, it's that close. Okay. 